Hi, I'm Kevin Dangor, Product Manager for Developers at Mozilla, and I'm really excited to show off for you today how to get started with the JavaScript debugger, the remote JavaScript debugger, using Firefox and Android and Firefox on desktop. Now before we can get started using the remote debugger, we need to actually set a few things up because we want to make sure things are secure. Uh, so the remote debugger right now, you have to actually turn it on. You'll see that I'm using Firefox Beta 15. Um, so when Firefox 15 is released in a few weeks, uh, this will be in the release version, um, you can, everything you see here. But first thing I want to do is go to About Config. And yes, I'll be careful, I promise, about changing our configuration. And what we're going to do is set up uh, devtools.debugger.remote enabled. Set that to true. So now that that is set to true, we just I just double clicked that. Um, that means that that's going to turn on the remote debugger. If we look under the web developer menu right now, we can see the debugger, but we don't see a remote debugger. So let's uh, go ahead and restart Firefox. All right, and I use this particular profile here. And so under the web developer menu, I now have a remote debugger. So we have our desktop uh, set up all set. Next, we have to set up the phone. Okay, now to set up the phone, uh, you see I've got several versions of Firefox installed. I'm going to run Firefox Beta. You can get that from the Google Play Store. Uh, there are some differences between the release version and Beta, so I'm going to recommend that you get Beta. Um, this will be released again in a few weeks. Um, so the first thing I need to do is I need to do the same kind of configuration that I did on desktop. So if I can type sideways on my phone, whoops, it's just harder than, harder than it looks. I will go to about config. Okay, go to about config. Once you go there, you can search settings for debugger. Okay, so I search for debugger. There are two settings that I need, need to change here. One is I need to turn off force local for the debugger. So I toggle that. And I need to turn off remote enable, or rather turn on remote enable. Uh, so I toggle that to true. Okay, and you can also see that the debugger uh, remote port is set to 6000. We will be using that soon enough. Okay, so now I will leave Firefox. Uh, and one of the other things I'm going to need to do is restart Firefox. So I'm going to take, go to the uh, switcher here and remove it from the list. That way um, I can restart it. I, I also, I'm going to need to go to settings uh, because I'm going to need to know what the IP address of my phone is. So if I go to settings uh, and I go to Wi-Fi and I click on my network, uh, you can see there's my IP address there, 192.168.1.116. And I'm going to need to be able to type that into my desktop. So that's why I need to know what my IP address is. So you just go to Wi-Fi, click on your Wi-Fi network, uh, and then you'll get your IP address from there. Okay, so now my phone is all configured for remote access. Okay, and now we get to the fun part. Since we finished our setup, we can start doing some remote debugging. First thing I'm going to do is pop up in Firefox beta again. And I'm going to go to twitter.bootstrap. or sorry, twitter.github.com slash bootstrap. So bootstrap, if you're not familiar with it, is Twitter's uh, responsive CSS and JavaScript framework. Uh, helps you get started with new uh, web projects, basically. All right, and I'm going to jump to the JavaScript plugins. All right, and then I will scroll down and go to the buttons. Um, so looking at the buttons, uh, I know the stateful button, I know the way it works, um, and that's the one I'm interested in, in checking out in the debugger. So back on my desktop machine, I'm going to go to the remote debugger, and it's going to ask me where is it, where is it going to go. So I'm going to tell it 192.168.1.116. Uh, because that was the address that we looked up on the phone. And when I hit this on my phone, it's going to prompt me if it's okay to open that remote connection. Um, so I'm going to hit okay. Um, and it's got a pretty quick timeout on there. So just hit okay and then hit okay on your desktop and you're all set. So as soon as I've done that, I can look at all of the scripts that have been loaded on that, on that page on the, on the uh, phone. 
So I'm actually looking at the page at what's running on my phone right now. Um, I happen to know that application.js is the file I'm interested in. Uh, and I can use the search box here. If I put a, a hash sign, you can use, if you start typing, it'll search for scripts. If I put a hash, uh, it will actually search within the script. So I will search for fat button, which I know it happens to be uh, an ID used on this page. It's the ID of that particular button. So what I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint right here, which is the click handler for the button, which means that as soon as I go and tap that button on my phone, it's going to trigger the debugger at this point. So let's try it. All right, so now it has triggered the debugger, uh, and you can see that I can look at the variables in scope here. I can see what's been passed in. Um, I can see what this object looks like. I can see what its properties are. It's quite handy. Um, and this, of course, is a, a jQuery event object, so it's fairly straightforward um, straightforward stuff if you use jQuery. Now, the uh, interesting thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to step over this, and I'll step over the next one, and you can watch on the phone as the button changes its text to say loading. Uh, so you can see it now says loading there. Now the next part of this function is it says a set, it's a set timeout for three seconds and it's going to reset what that button, what the button text is. So if I press play on the debugger, uh, you will see in three seconds it's going to come back and the button on the phone will change just like it has. So this is a great, it's a great example, a uh, very simple example of a way that you can inspect the JavaScript running on your phone directly from your desktop. And it really wasn't very hard to set up. It's not hard to run. Uh, and we've got a lot more planned for these features. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.